Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa if you're new here and I am a homeschool mom to five and a military wife and today I'm going to share with you just some of the ways that I homeschool multiple children. <laughs> All right so I've actually been homeschooling for five years now. This, this next year will be our sixth year um, and we've used Memoria Press the whole time. And actually I'm changing some things up this next year um, because I've just realized that some things are just not working for us. We are actually still using Memoria Press because we love it so much, but I'm going to make it work for us. So as I've homeschooled for five years, um, I've realized that there's just a lot that you just can't do at all. So, um, so just realize that mamas that you cannot do everything and if you have multiple children you need to focus on those basics so we are focusing on the basics um, but we are also getting in those fun subjects like read alouds and science and history and all those fun things too um, but we're just going to do it a little bit differently so I'll explain that here in a second on how we're going to use the manuals this year and it's just going to be a little bit different for us um, and each family is different. So if you have one child, it may be different for you and you may be able to use more Memoria Press, um, the manuals and just do everything exactly how it's done. But, um, we have four boys, four boys, and a couple of them have probably mild uh, ADHD and um, a couple probably have dyslexia as well. I'm seeing signs of that. So when I see signs of that, we use the Barton for our literature and spelling and things like that. So in another video, I would be happy to explain, um, what we do as far as the, my reluctant readers and, um, my children that have dyslexia as well. So I would be happy to explain that in a different video, <laughs> but today I'm just going to share with you some of the things that, I mean, how with Memoria Press, how do you go through all these manuals um, for each child? <laughs> it's a lot. So um, what I do, I actually do not look at my manual <laughs> throughout the week. I look at it one day each week, usually Saturday or Sunday, and that is when I print out or put the worksheets into different folders for each day. So I don't even look at it during the week except for the very back of it when we do our reciting each morning. So um, that is something that I just don't do. So um, let me show you what our folders look like. They are just a folder. I mean, it's just a three, well, a three ring binder and each child has their name on it. Um, and so my daughter actually decorated hers and she can actually do more of the writing in the workbook stuff than my boys can. They are a lot more hands-on and that's just how boys are and they are geared that way. So we try to do quantity over quality as far as papers and things that um, like that go. So are they understanding it? Um, are they doing it well and not as much as like how many did we get done? So, um, that's worked well for me. And also just this, 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 um, three ring, three ring binder system is working really, really well for me. So each inside of my three, of our, of each child's three ring binder, there is a folder for each day. I don't have the days written on, on them. I planned on doing that. I need to do that. Um, but we actually just have different colors for different days and that works too. So like Monday is orange and then I'll put Monday's work in orange and that. All right. So just for each day, I'll just have them pull out their work for that day. And then that is what they get out. And it's pretty simple. So I don't have to do a ton of work as far as knowing what they, they need, but I will say this. So in like kindergarten, Sometimes we'll have some work on days that is not um, papers that I can print out or put into that folder. And so if I have something like that, then I will just make a copy of that part of the um, teacher's manual. And then I highlight like um, if she has a 
story that she's going to read, um, my kindergartner, <laughs> she has a story she's going to read in the Fun in the Sun book, then I will go ahead and I will just highlight that on there and then I will put that into her folder and then I'll know that she needs to read that. And I don't have to keep flipping through manuals or anything like that or keep a bunch of bulky manuals around, although I do keep the them turned to their reciting part, if that makes sense. So each morning we have the reciting part opened for each grade um, in our morning basket or actually more of a morning cart. We use a cart to keep all my um, math teacher's manuals and things like that as well. Also, I don't actually teach math necessarily every single day. Sometimes we do like two math lessons a week and I just try to put all the lessons into two lessons if that makes sense. So I'm only teaching them maybe once or twice as far as their math goes each week and then they're doing the papers and showing me that they understand it. And I help them with that and we work through that through the papers together and that's how we do our math. Um, I know this is not how you're supposed to use them and I love to use them the, exactly the way that they were intended to be used. Um, but again, this is a homeschool and not a school, so um, we just do it that way and um, it works really well for us. Um, and then as far as their um, enrichment, I just pick one grade's enrichment and we go through it together. Or if we're doing Latin, um, I'll have that together as far as just reviewing our Latin words. I will we'll do that during our morning time together as a family um, and our morning, uh, you know, Bible time together. So I won't be doing two Bibles, one for the little ones, one for the bigger ones. We just don't do that. Um, we just pick one and that's what we stick to and it works really well. So kind of doing our family subjects together. So I just kind of pick family subjects, if that makes sense. Um, and I hope that that's helpful to you all. I also have a three-year-old and a just turned five-year-old. He's not going to be ready for kindergarten this next year. So we'll probably just do some of the junior kindergarten stuff, um, for him. But, um, so I'll print some of those papers out, but also just remembering that those little ones, um, putting them on your lap when you're reading, you know, the read aloud story for the week, kind of starting that way. And they really enjoy that and getting that time with mommy and being able to recite something. So sometimes the reciting might be just reciting their letter sounds with me or um, counting to 10 or things like that. So we do that and then I usually give them a activity that they can do on their own. And that's how that works. And I have, let's see, in little bags, I'll show you. So I have like a ba some bags that I just put different activities in. And so these uh, elephants, these counting elephants have mats. And I think I got this from Lakeshore, Lakeshore Learning. And so it has little counting elephants and things like that. So my three-year-old and my five-year-old, I'll get out an activity for them to do. And that gives me a little more focus as far as that goes. Um, or I might have one older child go and play with the little ones for a little bit so that I can focus with somebody else if they don't have other things to do. But I try to go around and have focused time with one child at a time and go through their things that they need help with me. And then they, and then the other children that don't, that aren't working, working with me at the time will work on their subjects that they can do on their own. So if that makes sense, that's kind of how that works for me. Um, all right. So yeah, I'm not an expert at all. <laughs> um, but I do love teaching. I did go to school for teaching and, um, found that I did not care for the public school system. <laughs> so I enjoy teaching my children and I love, um, just being able to do more hands-on stuff. So um, I'm not always doing everything in the books and, um, that's okay. So do what works for you as far as that goes. And, um, a couple more tips as far as reciting, um, reciting 
I do not, as we start to get into the year, you can see that it will have, you'll have like a ton more reciting than you can actually go through in a short amount of time with each child. So what I do is I, I shorten that. So we will do just maybe um, several weeks in a row and then maybe one review from a past week if we get too far in there. So if you get up to like 30 weeks of school or you know 20 weeks of school, you're gonna have a ton of reciting. And to be honest, we just don't have time to go through that much reciting. So I just do one from a previous week or a couple from a previous week as far as reciting um, and as a review. And then we just focus on the ones that the weeks that are closest together, maybe, maybe six at the most, um, or a couple at, at the, you know, at the least. So that's kind of how we do that. And it makes reciting go a lot faster, but they, they do learn stuff and they, um, yeah, they, and they, they do really, really well with their, their reciting. They learn a lot doing that. So it, it's very important. I feel like, um, as far as the manuals, <laughs> mine just fell down. So I don't know here. I might have to grab it real quick. Let's see if I can grab it real quick. As far as the manuals for like extra subjects, um, like mammals or Greek mythology or those kinds of things. These manuals are amazing and I love them, but my boys just can't do that much writing. So we do our focused writing time. There's cursive. I mean, they're practicing writing with their cursive or during their writing lessons or grammar or um, I'm trying to think their literature lessons when they're reading the, the, um, the fill in the, you know, vocabulary word, the definitions for the vocabulary words and the comprehension questions. So they're doing lots of writing throughout all those times. Um, and those are the four things where we practice our writing. But for things like this, I don't usually have them fill everything out. So, um, <laughs> so I think someone else mentioned this as well. Um, we just don't fill everything out. I use this more as a guide. So <laughs> We read through our manual stuff as a family, and then I use this guide, the questions in it, we answer them aloud and do it as more of a discussion type thing. So if that's helpful to you, then great. Um, you know, uh, this last year just really taught me a lot as far as just like, um, sometimes life can get hard and difficult and you just you may not be able to do all the writing that's in all the workbooks or, um, kind of thing so yeah so you know take it down a notch make sure that you're reading about the mammals you know but um just do a discussion look at the questions in there see if they know you know different things different questions that they have in there or have them draw a picture in their composition book of that mammal while you're reading about it or something um so you know keep it simple and they'll still learn a ton so um yeah those are my <laughs> tips that I have for teaching multiple children and just, you know, remember that everybody needs a break sometimes, even you need a break. And so, you know, kind of make sure that you kind of take some breaks throughout the year if you need to and, you know, have a shorter summer break or something like that. That works really well for us. So if things come up in the year and uh, you just need a break, then that's okay. <laughs> and everything will work out. And sometimes they learn some amazing things during that time. Um, so, so yeah, be sure to subscribe if you, um, want to see more homeschool content and large family grocery hauls and give this video a like if, uh, you felt like these tips were helpful. Um, yeah. If you have any more questions, um, about how, I homeschool uh, five kiddos then go ahead and um, leave them in the comments below I'd be happy to answer them or do other videos on this subject so have a wonderful um, school week <laughs> hopefully you guys are finishing up here soon um, we have actually our years running a little bit longer so we have a couple more weeks to go here um, and we're gonna go a couple more weeks into June 
So have a great week. Thank you for watching. Thank you.